Hey, what's up everyone, and welcome back to the Sanctuary. I'm your host, Professor C, and we're going to do some more A&P today. Specifically, I'm going to take us through the second part of the connective tissue talk, where we talk about the non-proper tissue, the cartilage, bone, and blood. So, let's do it already. All right, so we're going to look at the other connective tissues, right? The connective tissue that's not proper, right? So this involves the cartilage, the bone, and the blood. The problem is people forget these are connective tissues because they're often talked about at the end of the story. All right, so let's take a look first at hyaline cartilage. Hyaline refers to something that's glassy, a glassy state. So one of the tricks I use when I see this tissue is stained glass. It kind of looks like a stained glass window. What you're seeing, actually, and let me kind of draw it here first, you're seeing kind of a swimming pool with a darker stained dude in the center, right? And you might see another one next to it like this, some kind of light object with a dark stained object in the center. This is lacunae, which is the white stuff that are holding chondrocytes, the cartilage cells. Think of the lacunae as a lagoon. It's almost the same, I believe it is the same root. A lake, or what I like to call in class a swimming pool. So think of the lacunae, and lacuna would be a singular for that. Think of the lacunae as a swimming pool, and you have a chondrocyte floating in a very small swimming pool. If you can picture that, then you're on your way to mastering the cartilages. All the cartilages will have the structure of chondrocytes swimming in lacunae. The easy way is to stop looking at the lacunae. If you look at the pink stuff, and I'll kind of draw some squigglies here, all this stuff underneath it and around it, that's the matrix of this tissue. And it's a smooth, glassy matrix. It may not appear that way to you, but I'm going to show you some dirty matrix in future slides. So what I see here, first of all, is a stained glass window. Sometimes I call this the eyes in the jungle. If you've seen like a Scooby-Doo cartoon where Shaggy and Scooby are running past the jungle and you see something in the woods that's scary, but you don't see the body. All you see is kind of the eyes in the jungle like that or like that or like that. And so if you hear me say eyes in the jungle, that's what I refer to when I'm seeing these chondrocytes in their lacunae. Functionally, it does what you think cartilage does. It's support. Now, most of the bone in your body is laid down on top of cartilage. So that's what that second functional statement says. It forms the framework for many bones. Before you form your bones, you lay down a cartilaginous framework so you can build the bone on top of it. Location, these are classic. The embryonic skeleton, the embryo of course being the unborn baby. When you start forming your skeleton before you are born, it is a cartilaginous skeleton. And then later as you mature, uh, you start laying down bone on top of that embryonic skeleton. Some of your joints are hyaline cartilage. We'll talk about which ones when we get to that particular chapter. Stuff in the nose, stuff in the trachea, that would be the windpipe, stuff in the larynx, right, the voice box, laryngeal, and then costal refers to the ribs. So we find this widely distributed. If you know you're looking at cartilage, kind of the default answer is hyaline because that's the one we find most of the places. Tricks for me again, the stained glass window, the eyes in the jungle. Let's look at some more hyaline images. All right, I see the eyes in the jungle. They're not as maybe as distinct as the previous picture, but I do see the chondrocytes. There's one right here. There's a chondrocyte sitting in a lacuna. The chondrocyte's kind of washed out, but there it is. Chondrocytes sitting in their lacunae in their swimming pools. And around them is this smooth, pink, glassy matrix. I don't see any cracks in the window. So smooth matrix, eyes in the jungle, hyaline cartilage. Function, support. This is a really great picture. You got eyes in the jungle popping out at you. What's the dark thing in the center? What's well, a chondrocyte? 
What's a swimming pool that he's swimming in? It's a lacuna. And then what is all this stuff right here? Well, that's the matrix of the tissue. Again, nice and smooth and glassy appearance to this. So this would be classic hyaline cartilage. Stained glass window, eyes in the jungle. Another one, the matrix is kind of darker here, but it's still smooth matrix. There's no cracks in the matrix. I still see chondrocytes sitting in lacuna. I still see the eyes in the jungle idea. Function, support, location, laryngeal cartilages, embryonic skeleton, some joint cartilages. All right, this is dirty matrix, right? Check out the matrix real quick. Don't look at the eyes in the jungle, even though they're the most interesting thing to look at. Look at the dirty matrix. And then I'm going to flip back to the clean matrix. Clean matrix. Clean matrix, dirty matrix. So when I talk about dirty stained glass, that's what I mean. There's these snakes or these cracks in the glass. That's elastic fibers. And that's why we call this elastic cartilage. So it's very much like hyaline. I can still see chondrocytes in the lacunae. No problem. I still see my eyes in the jungle. That's the key. I'm looking at some kind of cartilage, but it's the matrix that's the giveaway. The matrix is filled with elastic fibers. So this should give you some hint to its function. It does give you structural support, but with some flexibility, such as in the pinna of the ear, right? Not the lobe of the ear, but if you go up to the top part of the, let me draw an ear real quick. There's a beautiful ear, right? Not the lobe, but up here, this, this rim of the ear, often called the pinna, you can flop it over and it doesn't crack, it doesn't break, and then you can let it go and it snaps back into position, just like you would think elastic fibers would allow. You could also find it in a structure in the throat called the epiglottis. So let's try to see some other images of this and we can use our dirty cracked stained glass. Beautiful picture again. I see chondrocytes sitting in lacuna all over the place. And the, the important point is, once I see that it's cartilage, I see that dirty, dark staining, not only dark staining, but lots of fibers in the matrix. Right in here, I see that very clearly. Lots of snake-like black elastin fibers in the matrix. Location, pinna of the ear, the epiglottis. Function support, but with some resiliency, right? With, with some snapback properties. Same thing here. I see chondrocytes and lacuna pretty easily. The matrix looks a little stained glass at first, but don't be confused by that. I do see lots of cracks in the glass there. I do see dirty matrix. So this is more elastic cartilage. Very close shot of, here's a chondrocyte sitting in its swimming pool called the lacuna. Eyes in the jungle. I know I'm looking at cartilage. But again, the key here, which type of cartilage is look at the matrix and you can see those black cracks in the glass. Very dark staining, but the chondrocytes are popping out at us. The lacuna are popping out at us and the dark, dirty, cracked matrix in the background is the giveaway. We're looking at elastic cartilage. Fibrocartilage. Oh, this one's evil. There are so many bad pictures of fibrocartilage out there. Or you could say there are many good pictures of fibrocartilage, but they all look different. So this one's a tricky one to get right. I would say that when I gave exams on this, fibrocartilage was, was the most missed type of tissue. So let's try to figure this out. All right, many collagen fibers in the matrix rows of chondrocytes. Now this picture doesn't even show that very well, but here's a chondrocyte in a lacuna. Here's some chondrocytes in lacunae. And then most of this though is this wispy cloud smoke looking fibers of collagen. And it doesn't quite look like collagen we've seen before, which look like kind of big fat pink ropes, but it's this wispiness to it that is the giveaway for me. So straight up function, shock absorption. That is what fibrocartilage is all about. So I would expect to find this in areas of the body that are under, well, at least high pressure, like the intervertebral discs. That is the discs that are in between the vertebrae running up your backbone. Every time you take a step as a human being, you're kind of bouncing on your vertebral column. So you want to give a little bit of shock absorption in between uh, those vertebrae. And these are called intervertebral discs. 
pubic symphysis is down in the pubic region of the body where the two pubic bones meet together in the center bottom of the body. And again, there's very high stress there whenever you try to walk or take a step in this area. So it makes sense that you put some sort of structure in between the two pubic bones to absorb that shock. And this is called the symphysis pubis or the pubic symphysis. Tricks to this are tricky. Cotton candy, wispy clouds, smoke in the air, or storms on Jupiter, which I've put down there at the bottom right hand corner. And you can kind of see there's some storms on Jupiter and they kind of look like that. Whatever trick works for you, use it. If all those tricks work, good. This one's a tough one, right? Let's look at some more pictures of fibrocartilage. Strange, huh? What do I see here that tells me it's fibrocartilage? Not a lot. I see these wispy collagen fibers. Again, kind of looks like wavy bacon on your first shot. And I might even be wanting to call it that, but this is fibrocartilage. It's the cotton candy look. What's giving it away to me? Maybe these lines of nuclei. What's the function? Shock absorption. What's the location? Interferdebral discs, the pubic symphysis. Another picture of fibrocartilage, the lines of nuclei, kind of like ants crawling across your cotton candy, may be the help that gets you over that finish line on fibrocartilage. All right, bone. The first note is bone is connective tissue. Don't forget that part. But once you see a picture of bone here, uh, you'll never forget it again. It kind of looks like tree rings. So let's talk about this. It's pretty easy, this one is. Calcified matrix, again, it does have a matrix because it's connective tissue. It's all the brown stuff, but this is not space. This is not open space, or it's not even glue like we saw in some of the other tissues. This is a hard calcified solid matrix. It is highly vascular, and these big holes in the middle are where you would find blood vessels and nerves running through the bone tissue. And the system that we see here with these tree ring system is called a haversion system. So let's let's talk about some of the structures I see here in the bone. Even though it's really clear that this is bone tissue, you may also see this called osseous tissue. Remember, os is the root for bone, so osseous does refer to the bone too. Function, well, just what you think bones do. Support the body, protect organs, stores calcium minerals, phosphate minerals, and other things. Store fat, yes, some fat is stored, stored in the bone marrow. And hematopoiesis, a word we saw on some slides on the last talk, blood making process. All blood cells are born in the bone marrow. So bone is not just for support. It has other features as well when we talk about the function. Location should be pretty obvious. These are the bones in the skeleton. Tricks again, the tree ring look to me is a giveaway here. And it's kind of like we have one big tree here, and we have another tree over here. And in the next slide, I'll talk about this aversion system and what we call these different pieces of this bone tissue. Right, wonderful. Again, right off the bat, I can see these large, giant circular structures, which looks like trees that have been cut down. Classic bone tissue. However, let's draw and label what I'm seeing here. So let's start it out. An osteon. Well, an osteon is the big giant circle. Right? It's got a it's got a hole in the center, but the osteon is that. Here's an osteon here. I'm circling. Here's a little smaller osteon next to it. There's another osteon over here. So those are called osteons. That's kind of the unit of the bone. In the center, we find the hole called the central canal. I see a central canal here where I'm coloring in. I see a central canal here where I'm coloring in and here. Again, we'll talk about this much, much more when we get to the bone chapter. But inside that central canal, you'll find blood vessels, nerves, and some other stuff. Lamellae. All right, if you look beyond the central canal, the tree rings, the actual, here's a ring, right? Here's a ring and here's a ring. The actual rings are called lamellae. One of them's called the lamella. So if I could draw them in green here, let me just underline to show you that these are the lamellar rings. They kind of form these concentric circles out to the edge of the osteon. So we have an osteon is the big circle, central canal is a small circle, and all the circles in between 
are called lamellae. They're going to give strength to the bone tissue. You may also see little black structures along the lamellae. I'll draw them in green here just to keep the same idea, but that's what you're seeing in the other pictures. These little black guys here are the cells of the bone tissue. Those are the osteocytes. And if you could look closely, they are swimming in lacunae, just like we had chondrocytes swimming in lacunae. But usually you just see the black ovals that are the osteocytes. And if you can look real closely, let me change my color one more time, you can see some little snaky arms reaching out where they kind of, these osteocytes start to look like little squashed bugs. Well, these little arms that are sticking out from the, uh, sorry, from the osteocytes are called little canals. And the term is canaliculi. A canaliculus is a singular little canal. Canaliculi are multiple little canals. So let's try it again. The big giant circle is the osteon, the edge of the osteon. The hole in the center is the central canal where we have blood vessels and nerves. The other circles that extend outward concentrically from the central canal are called lamellae, and they give support to the bone muscle, or sorry, to the bone tissue. The osteocytes are the little black bugs that are along uh, the rim of the lamellae. And the canaliculi are the small extensions, the little canals that are coming out of the osteocytes. All the brown stuff that's not any of that that I mentioned is all the calcified bony matrix. Blood. Remember, blood is a connective tissue. And this is a great picture of blood. What I see everywhere are pink donuts. Or it kind of looks like a bowl of Cheerios if the Cheerios were pink. We have red cells, erythrocytes, and the funny thing is they're not quite red, right? They're pink. They're little pink donuts. All these pink donuts are red blood cells. Their job is to carry oxygen and carbon dioxide. And we'll get into that story much, much later. But all over this slide, mostly I see red blood cells, RBCs. Now I do see this guy, and this guy, and this guy over here, which are definitely not white, but they're called white cells. They're called leukocytes. So ironically, the white cells are darker than the red cells, which I've never quite understood. But they really can be identified by the dark purple nuclei that are inside of them. Notice the pink donuts, the erythrocytes have no nuclei. And we've seen this in other talks that red cells are anucleate. They do not contain nuclei, but the white cells definitely do. And we can see them there. So very much fewer, almost a thousand to one red cells to white cells. All right. You could see on good images, teeny tiny flecks in the background. I'm not exactly sure if these, what they are. Uh, they're usually they're usually found in clumps, but those may be, those little tiny things may be thrombocytes or what we would call platelets. And when you look at a blood smear, those are the three things you should see are a lot of red cells, a couple, a few white cells, and then some teeny tiny little pieces of cells called thrombocytes or platelets. And then all the white stuff that would be the milk of the cereal, this is the fluid matrix. Blood has a fluid matrix and it's called the blood plasma or also known as blood serum. Those words are interchangeable. The function of course is move stuff, right? Transport things from point A to point B. They could be hormones, neurotransmitters, waste, all the things listed there and more. So the function is movement, movement, transportation. Where would we find this? Well, we know where we find the blood, inside the heart, inside the blood vessels, inside the cardiovascular system. Tricks, pink donuts, cereal bowl, whatever works for you. This one's pretty uh, recognizable almost immediately though, once you've seen it. Another picture of blood, a little close up. I like this picture because it not only shows the pink donuts, what are they? Red blood cells. Shows the nice matrix back here, this fluid matrix known as the plasma or the serum. But it shows this fella and this fella and this fella. Those are some white cells, right? Those are called neutrophils, which we'll learn later. Here is a different type of white cell with these red freckles. That's called an eosinophil. And I see perhaps another type of white cell over here and here called a basophil. And maybe yet again another white cell called 
a monocyte. So lots of varieties are found in the white cell world, but they all have this uh, dark staining nuclei that is easily visible. Remember, the red cells do not have nuclei, only the white cells. This is a great image showing a lot of white cells in one shot. What are these little tiny flecks? Well, they may be thrombocytes. They may be platelets. All right. Well, that was the end of the connective tissues. On the next talk, we'll deal with uh, muscle and nervous tissue because there's not much to it. It's pretty simple. That's the hard part is the epithelium and the connective tissue. So thanks for watching this one. If you want to check out the other videos, feel free. Please do so. And I'll see you for the next one. Bye-bye.